Hi this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let me show you how to use the terminal to find the largest files and folders on your drive. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So while you can use the Finder to find large files it's a little more difficult to find large folders and it can be faster to do both of those things using the terminal. So when you launch the terminal you get a window that looks like this. Now when you're working in terminal you are always at a certain location. You can use PWD to get that location. In this case I'm in the Users folder MacMost. So the top level of my home directory. You want to start off at a good location for finding files. So starting at the top level isn't very good because you're going to get system files, library files, application files, things like that. It's better to start off at a place like your home folder or maybe your documents folder. If I were to list the files here, ls for list, then I would see all of the folders in my home folder. I could then go down into the documents folder by typing cd and then documents to go down into it. But you can also type cd and then the full path to any place and you can use the finder as a way to get a quick shortcut to that. So for instance here I've got a finder window and there's my documents folder which is where I want to go. So all I need to do here is type cd space and instead of typing the full path if I just drag and drop the folder into the terminal window anywhere then it will insert the full path. And Now I can type return just as if I had typed out all those characters. So now I am at the documents folder. I can list and see everything there. It's a bunch of subfolders there. If I want a better list I can do ls and then dash l to list everything this way. And I'll get to see things like a D here next to anything that is a directory or folder. These are all folders here. I'll also see the file size. Now the file sizes don't make sense for folders. Let's go into a subfolder here. Like for instance let's go into the projects folder and now I can do ls and see there's a bunch of files there. ls and then dash l will give me a full listing. D will denote that this is a subfolder. And anything that's a regular file has a dash there. And then here now the file sizes make sense. That's the number of bytes for this file. Now it can be hard to read these long numbers here. So instead I'm going to use ls, dash l, and also add the parameter h. That gives me human readable results. So m for megs, b for bytes, there's k and g as well. If instead of seeing a list like this with all the data I can just Instead of dash L do dash S and that gives me the sizes for everything. Now you can also use the find command to find files. So let's go back up a level. You can go back up a level with two dots like that so I don't have to retype the whole path to the documents folder. I know it's one level up so two dots will take me there. Now let's say I want to find a file. I can use the find command for that. I have to start off giving it a location. Most of the time you're going to want to use your current location which is just a single dot. If you're just starting off to use the terminal it's better to go to the actual location where you want to do things and then use a single dot even though you could actually type a full path there instead. Now let's say I want to find something by name. So I can do dash name and then I'm going to use quotes here. I'm going to use single quotes actually and I'm going to use the name of the file. So I know there's one called trail.jpg like that and it's going to give me the result which it finds that file in the projects folder. Now what if I had typed a lowercase t. It wouldn't find it. So case matters. But I could put an i in front of name for insensitive, case insensitive. So then it will find it regardless of case. Now instead of name or i name I can do find and then dash size. And now I could type something here like say 2 gigs or 2 Megs. But I'm going to get no results. The reason I get no result is I'm asking it to find files that are exactly 2 megs in size. It's unlikely a file is going to be exactly that. So if I want to find something 2 megs or larger I just put a plus in front of it like that. And by the way notice here that I easily bring up previous commands. I do that using the up arrow key. The up arrow key goes through your previous history of commands. So when you're modifying your previous command instead of typing it from scratch you use an up arrow to bring it up and then you can use the arrow keys to go back and forth and edit it or add things to the end. So now let's run this and you can see it tells me the files that are 2 megs or larger. 
But what about folders? This is great for files but a lot of times you want to find out what folders are taking up a lot of space. So let's use a different command, du for disk utility. And if I just run du right here in the documents folder, it's going to give me a list of all of the folders and the size next to it. So it's already pretty useful. It's actually going to look inside every folder and inside every folder of every folder and all the way down. So all the folders underneath this. It's a really long list. So what about just limiting that? You can using depth dash D and then give it a number. Like for instance 1 would just look in the current directory. I actually get the size of the current directory. There's the dot there. And then everything in it. So all the folders in it and the sizes next to it. If I were to repeat the command but D2 it would look one level down. So for instance I get the personal folder here but then every folder inside the personal folder as well. These numbers are hard to read so we can modify that further with dash H. And that gives us human readable numbers here. And what if we wanted to limit it to only folders that are above a certain amount. Well we could do that using dash T for threshold. And then you want to give it a human readable number like say 10 gigs for any folder above 10 gigs. That's going to give us no results here. So let's do 2 megs. And now we get just a list of everything that's 2 megs or larger. What if we wanted to sort it? Well we can sort it by sending the results from this command to another command. The way to do that is to pipe it to the command using the pipe symbol. That's the straight line character that you're going to find on US keyboards below the delete key. You need to use shift and then backslash to bring up that special character. And it's very common when working in terminal to use this. We're going to send the results of du to the sort command. And we're going to say we want to sort by the human readable numbers. So take into account it might be B, K, M, and G. And we also want to do R for reverse. So the largest numbers are at the top. And now we see here we get the largest at the top which is the current folder. So it contains everything. It's always going to be largest. And then we get the folder that's the largest followed by the next one and then all the way down. If we limited this to D1 we would just get all the folders in the current directory sorted by size. Of course as long as they were larger than 2 megs. If you ever wanted to limit this because the list was too long you could further pipe this to either the head or tail command. The head command gives you the first items from a list and the tail gives you the last items from the list. So you could do head. That's always going to give you the first 10 and there's fewer than 10 here. But if we wanted to do dash n5 it would just give us the first 5 items in the list. What about doing this with files? You can use the find command and then you would want to maybe pipe the results into a way that it can list the files. But there isn't a command to do that. The ls command will do that but you need to send each individual line to the ls command. You do that with dash exec exec and then we're going to use the ls command. Then we're going to do l to list human readable format and then you finish up the exec command with curly brackets to represent the incoming data from that line and then a backslash and a semicolon like that. Now you're going to get a list. It looks like the result of an ls-l command but you get the files that you found with this find command. So only the files that are greater than 2 megs. Let's do the same thing and look for files that are greater than 10 megs. And you can see the results are a lot shorter. So if you were doing say 1 gig or 2 gigs you could easily find the largest files that you've got. Now instead of using ls let's use du because disk utility will work on files as well as folders. And the parameters we would want to give it here are hs, human readable format by size. And now we get these results like that. And giving us some nicely formatted stuff here we can see it's not sorted. So let's further pipe that to sort and then human readable and reverse order. And now we get the largest files first. The result of our find. So we can change this number to something larger or smaller if we wanted to only find the largest files starting in the current location which is the documents folder. So here's the ultimate command for finding the largest folders. It's du and dash h for human readable sizes. You do a threshold, in this case 2 megs. Then you sort it, human readable in reverse order so the largest is at the top. And you can use head dash n 5 for the top 5 like that. 
And here's the ultimate command for finding the largest files. You find and then the current location that you're at and then dash size and then plus, in this case 10 megs, 2 megs, 2 gigs, whatever you want. And then you use exec to send those results into du, human readable, size again. And then you sort them, human readable, reverse order. And that gives you the largest files from that location. So I hope you found this useful or at least it encourages you to explore some commands in the terminal. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.